Praise the Lord. Church worshipers, I said, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this worship service. We bless your name for bringing us together. Not only to worship, but to see the way to life eternal. We're asking, Lord, every barrier in the way you clear up in Jesus' name. We'll climb every mountain. We'll jump every hurdle. Every enemy that stands in the way will walk over them and still get to heaven. Trials, temptations, tribulation, trouble, whatever, we will conquer in Jesus' name. Our coming to the service today will not be practice and worship as usual. It will be to get the weapon whereby we'll conquer every time in Jesus' name. Because wise unto salvation, wise unto victory, that what we get here in the service during the week, during the months ahead, years ahead, will give us constant victory in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Matthew chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to his own disciples. There was an event, something taking place. He himself was praying. He himself was watching. He himself was getting ready for the climax of his coming to this world. And he knew that his disciples will remain after him to carry on the work, to carry on the ministry that he had started already. He had saved them. He had chosen them. He had selected them. He had separated them from the world. He was preparing them for the glory ahead. The disciples, on the other hand, were looking at the moment and at the day, the event of the day. And when he told them, watch and pray, they were thinking of what was going to take place today and tomorrow in a few days' time. But the watching and the praying that Jesus referred to was for that time, for next week, for next month, till the end of their lives. Watch and pray eventually that to escape, overcome, conquer all the trials, tribulations, trouble, and temptation until you get to heaven. And the Lord is speaking to us today. We're not in the service for just an event of the moment. We're in the service so that the Lord will strengthen us and the Lord will equip us for the journey ahead so that on that final day you would not have fizzled out, you will not have died by the wayside. You will not stop your journey halfway. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Watch and pray. Watch, open your eyes 
that you don't enter blindfolded into temptation. If you are not watching, if you close your eyes while you're moving, while you're walking, and you fall into a pitfall, you may not get to the end. Open your eyes and see. Don't just look down. Don't just look up. Look in front of you. Look around you. Evaluate everything that comes your way and understand what's the purpose of that? What's the engine behind that noise? What's the personality behind that event? What's the person motivating, instigating this tempter, this temptress? Open your eyes and see. Don't just walk without your ears listening. Let your ears be opened. Let your mind be at alert. And let your whole personality wake up and understand everything depends on your action of the moment. Watch and pray. While you are watching, pray something beyond you that your natural strength cannot overcome. Something above you that your human energy cannot conquer. Something older than you are, someone older than you are, is trailing you and is looking for the weakest moment in your life. You cannot in your own strength, you cannot in your own power overcome him. While you are watching, that's making use of every faculty you have to see, to watch. You are praying. You are depending upon the Almighty God who has the power to help you and to sustain you. Don't only watch. Watch and pray. Don't only pray. Watch and pray. While you're watching and praying, that I might have this and have this and have that, something beyond that, that she enter not into temptation. He was talking to all his disciples, but everyone must take that instruction personally. Peter, you must watch personally. John, you must watch personally. James, you must watch personally. None can do it for the other. Each one must wake up. Each one must be active. Each one must be vigilant. Watch and pray individually that she enter not into temptation. The spirit, the spirit is unique to each individual. It's the spirit of the man. It's the heart of the man. It's the mind of the man. The spirit of the individual indeed is willing. I can tell Peter, I know you're willing. I can tell John, I know you're willing. I can tell James, I know you're willing. Each of my disciples, I can tell, I have chosen you out of the world. And I know you're willing. But I also know on the other hand, your, your strength cannot carry you. The flesh is weak. Isn't it unfortunate that the Lord can speak? Isn't it unfortunate that the one they knew to be the personification of the truth can speak to them and yet anybody can brush that aside. No, I'm not weak. I'm willing and I'm strong. I'm willing and I'm able. Let it come, whatever. Image, a man, let it come, whatever. A Pharisee, a Sadducee, let it come, whatever. Even Satan or demons, I will stand. Though all men forsake you, yet I will stand. Is it unfortunate 
that anyone can raise, exalt, elevate his self-confidence above the Savior. That's what, what Simon Peter did. And he said, no, I don't need to watch. I don't need to pray any special prayer. I've always been ready. And I'm ready to go with you to the prison. And I'm ready to even die with you. Please, watch and pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading here from verse 12. In verse 12, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Here is Paul the Apostle writing now by the Spirit to the Corinthians. Let him that thinketh he standeth as firm as me. He standeth as firm as an apostle. He standeth as firm as the one saint of God to speak to us to stand. Let him that thinketh he standeth, having self-confidence, having a firm decision. Let him that thinketh he standeth, there is no problem, there is uh, no challenge that I cannot take. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Always faithful. Church, I say God is always faithful. He was faithful to the whole nation of Israel. He will be faithful to the whole church of the Palai. He was faithful to Moses. He will be faithful to every minister here. He was faithful to every individual. Believing the promise of God, he will be faithful to you today. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? Ah, so you cannot say. You see, God moderates the temptation. He is not the cause of the temptation. As we all know, Satan is behind every temptation. But Satan is limited. That's why he told God about Job. You have fenced around him. You have made a hedge around him that I cannot go in. I cannot move in. If you remove the edge and you permit me to go in, I'll show you that the man is not serving you because he wants to serve. It's because of everything you have given him. But God is faithful that he will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. If you don't open your eyes, how do you see the open door out of your dungeon, out of the place of temptation? If you don't open the ears of your mind, how do you recollect the verse that will throw the door open and then you come out of that situation. If you are self-consumed and you are thinking only about yourself and you are not thinking of the power of God and the promises of God, how will you see when he makes a way for you to escape? The people who fall into temptation the people who don't open their eyes to see, they don't open their minds to receive the word that shows them the open door out of that temptation. They're concerned about other things. They're not concerned about the important thing 
getting out of the temptation, becoming victorious, and on their way to life eternal. But you will make a way that you will be able to stand. And then he will moderate the temptation, the trial, the trouble. That you'll find a way to escape. That ye may be able to bear it. I will bear. I can bear. Whatever little thing that comes, the Lord has prepared all of heaven. And he has prepared all of his sustaining grace for you that you will be able to bear it. But then, verse 14, be a man of action, be a woman of action. There are times to stand, there are times to move, there are times to run, there are times to flee. Verse 14, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. They're worshipping idols. They're showing it on the internet. They're showing it on the television. They're doing it by the wayside. They're worshipping idols. They're going on a procession on the street. Don't stand there. Don't gaze at them. Don't be watching them. How do they do this? These some believers, these idol worshippers, how do they worship their idols? Flee from idolatry. Don't you even stay there. Don't you even stand there. I am strong. What they do, how they do it, cannot affect me. Don't stay there. Flee from idolatry. You will flee. Look at First John. First John, chapter five. I'm reading from verse twenty-one. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. Now, my child of God, I have the Spirit within. And the spirit around me, I'm endued with power. I'm endowed with the gifts of the spirit. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The Lord wants us to be victorious every time. And we're going to be victorious. Temptation will come, but you will overcome. Temptation is real. And temptation is common to all. Sinners and saints are tempted. Even the Savior was tempted. Believers and unbelievers are tempted. The young and the old are tempted. When David was tempted, he wasn't a teenager. When David was tempted, he wasn't even in his 40s. Beyond the 50s, adults, Old people, elderly people, they're tempted. And when Satan tempted him to count and number the children of Israel, he was about coming to the end of his life. And so don't say, I'm beyond that now. The old and the young are tempted. What's temptation? Temptation is enticement to evil. Solicitation to evil. Through maybe discussion with somebody, or through flattery, or through an offer of pleasure, while they hide the pain, they hide the peril, they hide the perdition, and only show you what pleasure you will have if you yield to this, they don't call it temptation, if you yield to this offer. Those who have been tempted and conquered by Satan are recruited by Satan to tempt other people. You cannot be a tempter. You cannot be a temptress except your mind has been conquered 
by Satan the tempter himself. It is only after you have been tempted and you have succumbed and you have been conquered and you are now in the service of Satan that will become a tempter or a temptress. And then, uh, how do we overcome? We overcome by faith in Christ. We overcome by the word, the word we have read, the word we have heard, the word we have believed. You cannot overcome even if you quote the Bible and you don't believe the quotation that you are throwing to the devil, to the tempter. You must read the word, hear the word, believe the word. And it is the word you believe that you make practical, purposeful, positive use of and you defeat the devil. You will defeat the devil. But if you are idle, idle minds are the devil's workshop. Idle minds are easily overcome. But if you are in action, there are two words I want to throw at you for you to understand. There is emotion. Sometimes your emotion is kind of drawn into something. The feeling in your body. The pulling of your mind. And the attraction of the situation. I group all that under the uh, word emotion. But that emotion, you cannot control that emotion by saying, emotion stop. What's attracting me stop. What's trying to pull me to this temptation stop. You conquer by, you remove the E in that emotion. What remains? Tell me, tell me. Motion. You must be active. If you are being tempted, motion. Do something. Move your mouth and coach the world. Motion. Move your feet and flee away from there. And move your mind onto another subject. And move yourself, maybe to singing. And move yourself. Let there be motion. And then the motion will fade away. This important subject of coming temptation, I bring to you today under the subject, our constant vigilance and victory over temptation. Our constant vigilance and victory over temptation. I'm talking to overcomers today. I said I'm talking to overcomers today. But you know, you must pay attention. As you pay attention, strength will come to you. Knowledge will come your way. And enlightenment will come your way to overcome in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, constant watchfulness against temptation and sin. Not occasional watchfulness. Not watchfulness every other day, sometimes constant watchfulness against temptation and sin. Number two, courageous warriors against tempters and seducers. Tempters are warriors. Satan who tempts is a warrior. Satan knows it's in a battle. It's in a battle for your soul. It's in a battle to take your precious possession of salvation and grace away from you. Satan is not counting himself as just um, an afterthought. No, it's in the forefront of the battle. And he wants to wage war with you so that he can take whatever has been deposited in your life that is precious to God and precious to you. And the tempters to you and the temptresses and the seducers, they're in a battle. They may smile, they're in a battle. 
they may offer you something in a bed to draw you. They're in a battle, and you better understand and have the mind of a warrior, courageous warriors against tempters and seducers. Point number three, commendable winners. There are conquerors in the house today. I said there are conquerors in the house today. I'm a conqueror. I said I am a conqueror. Commendable winners for their triumph and steadfastness. Those who are triumphant must first of all be militant. If you are not militant, you cannot be triumphant. But if you are militant and you know you are on the battlefield, and you know that this heaven you've made up your mind, you are going to get to, nothing will stop you. And whatever it will take, even if you have to strive and fight against the tempters and the temptresses, even unto blood, nobody will turn you back. Nobody will take your crown from you commendable winners for their triumph and steadfastness. Come to number one. In number one, constant watchfulness against temptation and sin. I'm coming back to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. Watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed truly is willing, but the flesh is weak. May God remind you of those words every time you will watch. It's when people are not watching, when individuals are not watching, that's when they treat. That's when they're surprisingly taken and they're defeated by the tempter. You will watch. I will watch. And God will help you. You'll watch and the tempter will not take you in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 14. I read from verse 38. Mark chapter 14, verse 38. Watch ye and pray. Watch ye and pray. It's not a word hanging in the air. It's a word directed at you. You have a peculiar personality yourself. You have a peculiar situation where you work. You have a peculiar community where you live. And you as a person, you have peculiar weaknesses that easily can make you fall. Understanding your own peculiarities, watch ye and pray lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready. Since you became born again, you've been thinking of heaven. And if God were to take you to heaven when you were born again, the day you were born again, you, you would have said, yes, Lord, I thank you. Take me there. I'm ready. And if God were to say, make your choice today, there are some challenges ahead and there are some temptations ahead. Would I leave you to those challenges or do I take you home today? In all probability, you will say, Lord, if you count me ready, if you know I'm saved, I'm fit for heaven and you want to take me now, let me go now. But it's not taking you now. And there's still some things across the way of the pilgrim. It says, the spirit indeed truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. You see, temptation comes to everyone. As God is no respecter of persons, so Satan 
in bringing temptation is no respecter of persons. He came to Eve. He came to Adam. And he came to the last Adam, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's come to all sons and daughters of men since that time. That's why he's saying to everyone, let there be constant watchfulness against temptation and sin. Normally, we lock our doors against intruders. And we even put in place electronic gadgets and human security if we have something precious in our house. You make sure that you set the security there. Was that watchfulness over the properties you have? But you know, our souls, our salvation, our eternal inheritance are worth more than any earthly possession. If you watch over earthly possession, if you watch over the precious things you have acquired since you came to this world, you must watch over your soul. Temptation is available to take your soul away and drive it to the place you do not want. There are people on hand, almost to tie your hand and drag you and pull you to a place you wouldn't have dreamt of. And there are people that are available, tempters and temptresses, that will want to bundle you together if you allow them and they carry you to a shrine you never thought you will end your life there. You will watch. You will watch. One, watch at the gate of Eden's, Eden's habitation. The garden of Eden was there. And Adam and Eve should have watched at the gate of Eden. And he should have watched because of the posterity behind them. Adam, the father of all living, Eve, the mother of all living, should have watched not only for herself, but for posterity. They didn't watch. The serpent came in. We know the story. I was still suffering uh, the result of that event. Number two, watch over your birthright. Watch over your birthright. It's the failure of Esau to know I have something precious, my birthright. Watch against the portage of Jacob. Jacob has been eyeing that birthright for a long time. He has been dreaming about it, thinking about it. He wants to snatch it away from Esau. Watch over your birthright. Don't allow the portage of an afternoon to take your birthright away from you. Number three, watch from the eye gauge of Achan. Watch from the eye gauge of Achan. What you see sends information to your heart, to your mind. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't she chic? Isn't he handsome? Isn't that property exactly what I need? Watch from the eye gate of Achan, the property of Babylon. Number four, watch against the lost of something. Something. Where are you going? Where do you spend your leisure time? 
What's your hobby? Where are you always moving to? Who are you always contacting? Who are you always texting? Who are you always interacting with? Samson, watch against the lost, against the pleasures of Delilah. She has a goal. She is purposeful. She is an errand woman for her people. She is not befriending you for naught. She is an agent. She has been sent. Watch against the lost of something. Number five, watch against the ambition of Absalom. Watch. Absalom. You know what? That thought in your mind is not just there. There is a personality behind that thought. He knows that the army of David, your father, is stronger, is wider, is greater than any army you can ever set up. Absalom, Satan is trying to set a trap for you. He wants to finish you. And he's not just wanting to finish you here on earth. He wants to send you to hell. And he will use whatever you have in mind that you're dreaming about, that you want above any other thing. Watch against the ambition of Absalom, the position that will make you think you are going to displace another one. Number six, watch against the propensity of Solomon. Solomon, that wisdom you have to talk anybody into anything. That eloquence you have, that wisdom you have to talk an Egyptian princess into getting you to be married. Watch how you use that eloquence, how you use your wisdom until the daughter of Pharaoh fell for him. And then he tried it again. Another one came in until 300 wives that he had a chance to perform a kind of royal ceremony. And then others, he had no time to perform any ceremony. 700 of them, they all came in. And we don't hear about any fight among them. He was able to control them. He was in the business of controlling those 1,000 women instead of controlling the nation he ruled. Watch. Watch over the plurality of women. That once you have some influence, you have some money, and you have some property, and you have some position in society, They'll be willing to fall for you. Watch so they don't have the problem of the plurality of women polygamy. Watch number seven, against covetousness and avarice. So that prosperity does not replace purity in your life. Prosperity is good when limited. But prosperity will not take you to heaven if that prosperity takes away the purity of heart you ought to have. Lord, who shall abide in your tabernacle? Who shall ascend into the holy hill? They that have clean hands and a pure heart, those who have not lifted up their hearts to vanity. The Lord will help you. Genesis chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field 
which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, anything that makes you to doubt the word of God, as God said, anything that makes you to doubt the doctrines of the Bible, as God said, anything that makes you to doubt your conviction, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, don't even allow the conversation to go on. Don't allow the conversation to proceed. The woman said unto the serpent, we may eat. Hold on. The devil is older, much, much older than Eve. Much, much older than Adam. Satan had been Lucifer. He had been in a place greater, more beautiful than Eden. He had been in heaven before, but he lost it because he sinned without any temptation coming from outside. The temptation came from inside him. I will exalt my throne above the throne of the Almighty. And he fell. And because he had lost heaven, and there was no redemption or redeemer for him, he didn't want any human being to get to the place where he had lost. That's why he came. Don't get into conversation with him. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. If you are not going to eat it, why are you going to touch it? If you are not going to eat it, why are you examining it? If you are not going to eat it, why are you taking it and embracing it? If you are not going to eat it, why? Are you looking at it with admiration? We must not touch it, lest we die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Beware of anyone who confronts the word of God and contradicts the word of God point blank. God said, If you eat, you will die. Satan said, pardon me, I take excuse from that. That's what God said. No, that cannot be right. God is wrong. How can God say that? You will not surely die. Beware of anyone that is bold enough to contradict the word of God and to change the word of God and to put a knot against the word of God that says, no, it will not happen when God said it will happen. For God knows, does know, that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened. Beware of anyone that ascribes wrong intention to God. God knows this is for your good. God knows you'll get pleasure in this. God knows you'll get some promotion in this. And God doesn't want that. That's why God has said what he said. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods. He is God. Adam will be a God. You, Eve, you'll be a God. Beware of any promotion that is coming to you to make a human divine and make a human being that God has created to tell you you will be what God has not intended you will be. 
any promotion coming from the devil, I reject in Jesus' name. Any honor coming from the devil, I reject in Jesus' name. Any exaltation coming from the devil, you will reject in Jesus' name. Verse 6, and the woman saw, that's the downfall. When you see eye to eye with Satan, now I see you are gone. When you see eye to eye with the tempter, the tempter has an intention. He wants to bring you down by argument, by discussion, by exaltation, by flattery. He wants to bring you down. And then you nod your head. You say, now I see. When Satan becomes your friend, when the serpent becomes your friend, when the tempter becomes your friend, when the temptress becomes your friend, and he shows you something in your mind, in your heart, and you say, now I see. I see what you're trying to say. I agree with you. You are gone. You will not go to hell. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she had not even tested it. She took the word of the serpent. When you take the word of the tempter, the word of the temptress, at face value, and then you depreciate, and you trample over the words of the Almighty, the temptation has conquered you already. You will not be conquered. And he said, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and it treat to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. She sinned. Am I right? She disobeyed the Lord. Am I right? She fell. Is that right? Now, she had been tempted. She didn't overcome. She was conquered. She was defeated. A conquered person becomes a tool in the hands of Satan to make the nearest person to him, the nearest person to her, fall. Somebody who has been tempted by Satan and has been conquered by Satan becomes a tempter, becomes a temptress. Are you going to listen to somebody who could not stand? Are you going to listen to somebody who has been conquered himself or herself? Are you going to listen to somebody who is uh, like a jellyfish and could not have a backbone to stand? I thought if you are going to listen to anybody at all, you're listening to a conqueror. I said you're listening to a conqueror. Rather than somebody who had been conquered, look at the latter part of verse 6. And gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. He did eat. If somebody has drunk a poison, and while it's about to die, he recommends the poison to you, will you take that poison? Somebody wants to commit suicide and go to the suicide grave and go to hell forever and ever, and he takes a solution in a bottle and drank it. And while he's still having chance, he said, you are my friend, you are the closest person to me, let's go together to hell, drink of it too. Will you drink? You are not sure. Will you drink? You see somebody in the, on the internet, and they, they call them friends or pals or whatever. And then they say, you know, I'm planning something by this time tomorrow. I write a note behind. I'm going to drink at this dinner. And they mention the name. And you are my friend. You are my friend. Let's make it like a duet. Let's do it together. 
and go and buy. This is a shop where you're going to buy, and then we're going to do it together, and then we're on WhatsApp, and as I see you, you see me. One, two, three, go. If you want to go to hell, I will not go with you. Talk, talk, talk. I don't have any friend who is on his way to hell. I don't have any friend who is beckoning on me. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let us go. I said, no, you are not my friend. You are not my teacher. You are not my advisor. You know nothing. You are going to hell. I am going to heaven. Somebody there, where are you going? That heaven, you and I will get there in Jesus' name. Point number two, courageous warriors against tempters and seducers. Courageous warriors against tempters and seducers. Warriors. I'm a soldier of the cross. I said I am a soldier of the cross. You will do the warfare creditably well. You will overcome in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. This charge I commit unto this son Timothy. According to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, that thou by those prophecies, by those predictions, by those proclamations, by the watch of God you have heard, mightest war a good warfare on a battlefield. And we are waging war against the tempters, and the seducers, tempters and seducers, they will not catch you. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 11 and verse 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Look up here. If you are busy walking, you are walking at something very important. You are preparing yourself for the heavenly crown. And your hands are walking. Your mind is working, your eyes are working, your ears are working, your total personality is at work on righteousness, on godliness. Are you trying to increase your faith? You're studying the Bible, you're searching the Bible, you're praying, you're fasting, you're evangelizing, you're spreading the faith and you are earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. You are walking on love. You love members of your family. You want to love more. You are walking on love. You love sinners to bring them to the kingdom. You are walking on that. You are walking on your patience. I need to persevere. I need to be patient. I need to be persistent. You are walking on that. You are walking on your meekness and you are walking on your lowliness. The devil won't have a chance in your life. I didn't hear your amen. It's when you are not working, when you are not striving, when you are not worrying, when you are not developing anything, when you don't have any objective, when you don't have any purpose. It's when you don't see, I need more righteousness. I need more godliness. I need more faith. I need more love. I need more patience. I need more meekness and gentleness. And I'm working on them. When you are like that and your mind is already totally, completely occupied, 
Satan will not have enough chance to come to you. It says in verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You know, as you think about temptation, there are those who are conquered, those who are defeated. I call them thoughtless people, thoughtless people. They are not thoughtful. They are thoughtless. Because of that, that thoughtlessness makes them to be defeated. But there are other people that conquer. That's my team. I say that's my team. That's where I belong. They are thoughtful people. They are thoughtful people. They think. They think. They don't throw their brains away in life. Anywhere they go, their mind goes with them. Anywhere they go, the accumulation of knowledge that they had acquired all these many years, all their knowledge travel with them. There are people, anywhere they go, their mind, their decisions, their convictions travel with them. If they're sleeping, their conviction is sleeping with them there. If they're walking, they're awake, their conviction is awake with them there. If they go to Babylon, their conviction is right there with them in Babylon. If they're in Rome, their conviction is there with them in Rome. Anywhere they find themselves, they're thoughtful people. Others are thoughtless, that's why they're defeated. Those who are thoughtful, that's how they win. Any winner there today? You will win in Jesus' name. And then when you have got the victory, you've got the victory, you've got the victory, you will not sit back, take victory for granted, you still are th truthful, truthful. When we talk about those who are defeated, the thoughtlessness of yielding to temptation, those who yield to temptation, the thoughtlessness of yielding to temptation, Lord, where are you going? I have so much cattle, and I have so much property. I'm relocating. The place I am with Abraham cannot occupy the, the both of us. So I am going to a better place. I'm looking for the greener field. Lord, where, where are you going to settle? Well, come and see. And then he chose a place very near Sodom. You know the story. He pitched his tent there. He took his family there. He took the herdsmen there. He took his herds there. On the day when Sodom was on fire, none of the herdsmen of Lot escaped. None of the cattle of Lot escaped. Even his wife became a pillar of salt. Thoughtless. 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 Lord, deliver me. Say that. Lord, deliver me from the thoughtlessness of Lord. Esau. Esau, what are you doing? Trade by butter. I give you this, you give me that. What are you getting for the exchange, Esau? I'm getting a bowl of pottage. Look at the cup. It's reddish. Even the smell is inviting. What are you going to pay for this? Well, I'm going to pay with my birthright. Thoughtless. 
didn't think of the greatness of the birthright that linked him up with Abraham and Isaac. He threw it away. By the time he realized, he cried, cried, cried many tears. He could not get it back. Thoughtless people are people who are defeated in temptation. Balaam, where are you going? I'm going to Balak. He's promised me great wealth. He's promised me quite a lot. When he came the first time, I went to pray. And I asked God, should I go? He said, don't go. But I thought I'm missing a great deal. This man, he doesn't even know what to do with his money. And I am so lucky he's inviting me. I'm going to get something. Balaam, you'll get death with that property, with that money, with that wealth. You'll not have the life to spend what you think you're going to get. Not only that, you will end up in hell fire. And so he rose up. When he said, Lord, he prayed a quick prayer. They have come again. Can I go? Yes, you can go. Ah, thank God. The Lord has changed his mind. God never changes his mind. If he said no before, he still as wise at the first time. He said no. But the man went and God sent an angel to confront him and said, your way is perverse before me. Well, to cut a long story short, he died in the deal and went to hell. You will not perish like Balaam. He was defeated and conquered because he was thoughtless. If God said no at the beginning, he still say no today. Something. What's happening to you? Where did you sleep last night? You won't think of this. I slept. And it's the most peaceful sleep I ever had. Where did you sleep? I slept in the Lila's house. And that house, can I begin to describe it for you? No, don't worry. Where are you going to sleep tonight? I don't want to miss this. I want to spend another night with Delilah. Thoughtless, thoughtless. And then while the woman was not interested in sleep, she was interested in finding out the secret of your strength, the secret of your power, the secret of your stability, the secret of your steadfastness, and the secret of standing like the rock of Gibraltar that nothing could overcome you. And then he began to tell lies. And Delilah said, this one is a lie. But you say you love me. If you love me now, come on, tell me your mind. And when she kept on day by day by day by day, he opened up his heart and he said this is it and she knew the moment had come something was thinking of love delilah was thinking of capture of defeat of emasculating the man until there's no strength in him the Philistines are upon you, something. He went out to shake himself, like as other times. The power was gone. Your power will not go. The fountain and the source of your strength will not dry up. They captured him. They removed his two eyes. They made him to be grinding. While you are where you are, praise the Lord. I said, while you are where you are, praise the Lord. Where you are, this church, everything you are hearing, because you are coming every week, either Monday or Tuesday or Saturday or Sunday, whichever day, Thursday, 
It may look ordinary to you, but you have a protection that the devil cannot invade. If you move out, at the first time you get there to the house and habitation of Delilah, it may look like this is a palace and this is great. You will not go out of your protection. But let's leave those thoughtless people. They were all defeated. Thoughtful people are the people that will stand, that will overcome all the days of their lives in Jesus' name. Joseph, very thoughtful, very thoughtful. The woman said, come and sin with me. She says, no, I can't do that. God is watching over my life. And God sent me here for a purpose. It's not opening up yet, but I know God's will will be done in your life. How can I do this and sin against my God? And one day, when they were only the only two in the house, and the woman said, Providence has made opportunity for me. Nobody here. And nobody can tell whatever happens there. And he held the coat of the man, of Joseph, and said, Today, today, you will. No, you cannot force me. I will not. I will not. The woman said, today I catch you. They will never catch you. You must. And the man said, others may. I cannot. I will not do this. He held to the coat. He removed this coat and left Huh? You can take my coat, you will not take my conscience. You will not take my conscience. Somebody there, they will not take your conversion. Say it for yourself. They will not take my consecration. They may take your coat, leave it in their hands. God will give you another coat. And eventually, you know the story. He came to reign over the land of Egypt. And he told his brothers when they came, go and tell my father, the Lord has made me the Lord over the house of Pharaoh. And he has also made me the governor of Egypt. He will lift you up. But those who yield to temptation, who don't have any power to say no, and who do not have any conviction to say, take the coat, I go with my conscience. Those who don't have that conviction, how are they going to overcome? You will overcome. Daniel, an overcomer. I'll be an overcomer like Daniel. I will be an overcomer like Daniel. Until the angel came from heaven and said, Thou art beloved. They made an edict. They wanted to cut him off from the source of his power, from the source of his conviction. And they said, Nobody will pray for 30 days except to the king. Nobody will pray to the God of heaven. And the man said, the God of heaven is the only one that can supply my needs that no other person can supply. And if you tell me not to pray to him, you are cutting me off from the power source. You want to destroy me, you will not destroy me. Nobody will destroy you. And so, like he always did, he went three times a day. The lion den, lion's den prepared 
And he said, lions or no lions, I will pray. You will pray. Economy or no economy, I will pray. I can't hear you. Enemy or no enemy. Opposition or no opposition. Whatever, whoever stands in my way. Those are the people who conquer. He conquered. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar was furious and said, what am I hearing? The moment you hear the sound of the music of Babylon, there is music of Babylon. There's also music of believers. They're different. They're different. The music of the Babylonians, the source is different. The music of the believers, the source is different. When you hear the sound of the musical instruments of Babylon, you fall down, knock your head on the ground. You'll be all right. But if not, who is that God? They don't understand. They belittle our God. They think they are greater than our God. Are they greater than your God? Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? Nebuchadnezzar, king on earth, were not careful to answer you in this matter. You are king on earth. We have a king in heaven. He will deliver us. Personal, he will deliver me. He will deliver me. He will deliver me. He will deliver you. And so it was angry when enemies, tempters, seducers, when they get angry at you. A miracle that never happened before is about to happen. And it was thrown into the midst of the burning furnace. And then the Kadisa got up and he looked and he peeped. He said, What? I see something I've never seen. They will see something they have never seen. And you will know something you have never known. Were not three men cast into the burning fairy furnace and behold, lo, I see four men walking, walking, and their clothes are not burnt. Your certificate will not be burnt. Your clothes will not be burnt. The airs on your head, they are all counted, they will not be burnt. And your salvation will not be burnt up. They are coming out of that fire. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. The one that threw them in is the one that beckoned them to come out. You are coming out. If you are a conqueror, if you are thoughtful and you think of the power of God, you think of the miracles you are going to have, you think of the deliverance you are going to have, you are thoughtful, you are going to overcome. Those are the people that overcome temptation. The thoughtless who don't think about the future. The thoughtless who don't think about the help of God. The thoughtless who do not think about the consequence of their downfall, they never overcome. I will be thoughtful. And I will be truthful. I'll be true to myself. I'll be true to my calling. I'll be true to my ministry. I'll be true to my consecration. 
I'll be true to my conviction. I'll be true. I'm not going to place a man, a woman above my consecration, my conversion, and my commitment to the Lord. I'll be truthful to myself. I'm not going to, you know, get out of my own arena and my own realm and please a tempter and please a seducer. I will be truthful to myself. Where are you? Say it now. And you'll be truthful to the Almighty God. Look at Proverbs chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it not. It's not telling you to buy a book. If you buy a book where there's true doctrine, you buy that with money. It's not telling you to even buy the Bible. You already got the Bible. If you're going to buy a Bible, you buy it with money. It's talking about your heart, your soul, your mind, your inner man. Buy the truth. Get the truth. Embrace the truth. Own the truth. Possess the truth. How do you buy the truth? To store it in your heart with concentration. Buy it. With consecration. Buy it. With the price of prayer. Buy it. With attending the worship. When it rains, when it does not rain, buy it. We're placing it above every other possession on earth by it. With your very blood that whatever will happen and whatever the enemy will do, truth will be number one in your life by it. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Somebody give me a good Amen. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. Fear thou the Lord and the King. Fear thou the Lord and your leader. Oh, you think about it. We talk about the king. Honor him, fear him, exalt him, appreciate him, respect his position. But think about it. The pastor and the king. The king on earth may give you some good things, economy, education, a lot of things in society. But the pastor is the one that opens to you the book of life, the doctrines of life, and the word that takes you to heaven. And if you are to honor the king who gives you only earthly things, material things, how much more are you to honor your pastor, exalt your pastor, and fear your pastor, Reverence your pastor because he has been sent by God, not elected by votes, sent by God to show you the way to life. You will do the will of God. You will not look down on any minister in the church in Jesus' name. If you are being tempted by seducers, to look down, denigrate, and desecrate, and reject, and push to the background any of our leaders, your own local pastor, and your own pastor here. If you have yielded to that temptation, you'll overcome that temptation from today in Jesus' name. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not for them that are giving to change. Meddle not with them 
that are given to change. The Lord has saved you. You are not thoughtless. You'll be thoughtful. You are not really thoughtful. You'll be truthful in Jesus' name. Point number three, commendable winners for their triumph and steadfastness. Winners, conquerors, overcomers. I was calling you and you didn't answer. Winners, conquerors, overcomers. May the Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 35. Jeremiah chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 5 and from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 5. And I search before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, ports full of wine and cups. And I search unto them, drink ye wine. But they said, drink ye wine. But they said, when it comes to your turn, you'll say the right thing. Drink ye wine. But they said, we will drink no wine. We will drink no wine. Say it. We will drink no wine. That's right. I will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. I'm sure you've heard this story before. It was a test from the side of the Almighty God. And the Lord called Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, go and test the sons of the of Rechab for me and have pots full of wine and let there be cups there too. Have witnesses with you and take them to the very house of God. And then tell them, you are prophet Jeremiah. And they know you, of course. And you are the one telling them, drink ye wine. And those sons of Rechab, they said, with all due respect, prophet Jeremiah, we know your position. We know your title. We know your ministry. We know everything about you. And we know the expense you have gone into so that you provide this wine. Jeremiah, with all due respect, we will drink no wine. There are people that cannot stand. They don't have a solitary decision to say whoever Whatever, no matter the title, no matter the position of anyone calling me to contradict the consecration I had prayed through, the commitment I had prayed through, no matter the position of that person and no matter the title, Archbishop, Apostle, Prophet, the name Jeremiah, or Isaiah, or Ezekiel, anyone, no matter their denomination, I know what I know. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And now they come and they say, why don't you do this? I will say, like the Rechabite said to Jeremiah, well, will not. I will not. I will not. I will not. There are people that don't make any difference between deeper life member, deeper life minister, and the deeper life message. 
The message is the Bible. The minister is the man. You just became promoted to the midst of some workers. Or you just became promoted to the midst of full-time workers. But remember, there are men, full-time workers, part-time workers, ministers, preachers, pastors, whoever, they are men. The message remains the same. And so, that you come to the midst of these new people, and they tell you, welcome. But please understand, we who are workers, we have redefined the message. We have readjusted the message. And so, in this, our section, as full-time workers, this is how we do it. Drink your wine. If you are a man of conviction, a woman of conviction, what do you say? No way. I will drink no wine. You're talking to Jeremiah. I said, we will drink no wine. You're talking to a prophet. We will drink no wine. If a live Bible church is raised up to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And I've been confronted by many Jeremiahs. I've been confronted by men and women of big title. All these many years, God has helped me to stand. I will keep on standing. Like father, like sons. Like father, like daughters. Like the pastor G.S. of Deep Alive, like the whole, the whole of Deep Alive. Drink ye wine. Answer now. Drink ye wine. Change your message. Succumb and collapse. No, we will not. Look at the result. I'm looking at verses 18 and 19. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabite, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he has commanded you. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack, shall not want, shall not miss a man to stand before me, tell me, Forever, forever you will stand. Forever your reward will be secured. Forever you will be a winner. Forever you will be an overcomer. Forever you will be a conqueror. There will be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Rise up and take that to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to us today. Being a winner, being a conqueror, being an overcomer, whatever temptation may come, you will not succumb, you will not collapse, you will not be crushed, you will not be defeated, you'll have the courage to say, I will not fall, I will not yield, I will not collapse, I will serve the Lord or the death of my commitment and consecration and yieldedness and absolute surrender to the will and the word and the ways of God.